My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GMAT. Starting today, you and I are going to solve all the math problems out of this book here. The GMAT review, the official guide, the 13th edition. Make sure you buy the 13th edition, the GMAT review official guide. You're going to need this book to have it in front of you in order for you to be able to follow my work. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. As I said, you're going to need it. The problem that we are going to solve that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 152. Please turn to page 152. The very first problem. The very first problem. There are 230 problem solving questions. The higher the number, the more difficult they get. In the beginning, they're very simple, very straightforward. The first 50 problems should be should be not too bad at all. In the very first problem, again, I'm assuming that, the, that you have the book in front of you, so you're reading the problem with me, so that I don't have to read it to you. We have a project here. It, we are told that the fiscal budget for the project was $12,600. We are further told that at the end of at the end of fourth month, they have already spent $4,580. The question simply is, how much more that they have spent compared to what they were supposed to spend? How much how much over budget are they? Very simple. Very straightforward. All you have to realize here is that even though the, I'm going to read to you the first part here, it says a project is scheduled to a project is scheduled to be carried out over a single fiscal year, which has a budget of twelve thousand six hundred divided into twelve equal monthly allocation. They make it sound like this twelve equal monthly allocation is a big freaking deal. It's not. Don't do not divide it by twelve. You make your life miserable. You have to learn to understand how to save time in the exam. Find shortcuts and, and, and learn how to take the exam in a smart pace, what we are trying to do here. What we have to understand here is that the amount that they took the, the amount of period that they're talking about, four months, four months represents a third of the year. So instead of taking the monthly amount, let's just divide it by third. If we divide this amount, 12,600 by by three, that will represent the amount that they were supposed to spend for the first one-third of the year, which is the same as saying the first four months. So how many threes in a twelve? Twelve has four threes. How many threes in a six? Six has two, two threes, so it's forty-two hundred dollars. They were supposed to spend forty-two hundred dollars, but in reality they have they have already spent four thousand four four thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. Therefore they are three hundred and eighty dollars over the budget. They are three hundred and eighty dollars over the budget, which is A. Look at B. Uh, let's look at second part. Second, second question. That's it. We're done. Let's look at problem number two. It says, "What values of n What values of n will make hundred plus n?" Over n, not an integer. Not an integer. So let's find out. They give you the values here, one through five. So, hundred and one, hundred plus n over or, over n, which is hundred plus one over one, which is hundred and one over one, which hundred and one over one. Obviously, that's an integer. Hundred and two over two. But that's going, that's going to come out to be 51. That's an even number. 102 is an even number. Of course, even number, that's what even number means. It's divisible by 2. 103 by 3. Now, how do we know? How do we know? If a number is divisible by 3. Is 103 divisible by 3 instead of doing actually doing it out? The answer is very simple, very straightforward. If a num if the sum, if if the sum of the digits, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible. By three. That's what it is. 
you just have to look at the sum of the digits. So here, 103, if you take the sum of the digits, it will be 1 plus 0 plus 3. 1 plus 0 plus 3 is 4. And 4 is not divisible by 3. Therefore, 103 is not divisible by 3. If you try 103 divided by 3, it will not be an integer. There is a, that's your answer. So this was A, this was B. The answer is C. 103 divided by 3 does not give you an integer. The last one, number 3. Oh, I said last one because that's the last one I plan to do today. In the, in the last one, they tell you, number three, they tell you that the rectangle, we have a rectangular floor. A rectangular floor. A rectangular, rectangular floors, X and Y. And we are told that they have same area. So we have two rectangular floors and they're giving them names. They're calling them floor X and floor Y. And we are told that they have the same area. We are told that x is 12 by 18 and y is 9 by the unknown part, the length, which is what the point is. We have to find out what the length is. Very simple, very straightforward. Because of the fact that we are told that they have the same area, which means this quantity, 12 times 18, has to equal 9 times this length, whatever the length is. That's all. That's all it is. Divide both sides by 9. Divide both sides by 9. 9 divided by 18 divided by 9. There are two 9's and an 18. There you go. That your L equals 12 times 2 or 24. Our L equals 12 times 2 or 24, which happens to be letter E. That's all. That's the idea. We're going to do a few problems here and there, one or two problems, maybe three problems, but they're very simple in each clip. And I'm going to keep going at it. And we'll see how far we can go. No promises. Do you understand? We'll see how far we can go. As it stands, my goal is to go for 100 days, and then we'll see how, how things turn out. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.